Hey there Cosmic Warriors and welcome back to another video. Okay, so in today's video we are going to be taking a look at the independence and fighting spirit of those of you who have Mars within the 12th house in your natal breath chart but also for those of you who have Aries ruling your 12th house within your natal birth chart as well. So stay tuned. However, before we do get started, certainly make sure that you give this video a like if you like it. Also, make sure to subscribe if you have not already and to, of course, click that little bell icon so that you can keep yourself updated with further content from myself. And one more quick thing to mention, and that is that I have some merchandise pieces available along with some ebooks there. So you can go to the link in the description box below if you are interested. Okay, so with all of those introductions out of the way, Mars in the 12th house and Aries ruling the 12th house, let's do this. Okay, so if you have Mars in the 12th house or Aries in the 12th, then what this suggests is that you're learning spiritual lessons when it comes to your self-assertion, drive, motivation, your anger. Likewise, you're learning spiritual lessons when it comes to how you initiate, act and pursue. And it's naturally these things that tie in with your independence and your fighting spirit. See, the thing is, is that you can often struggle to assert yourself as effectively as you would like. And you may also find it difficult to stand up for yourself and to declare this is who I am and this is what I want. And so therefore you might give into other people's demands and requests quite easily, for example, or you might appease others whilst feeling incredibly bitter deep down. Perhaps certain wants and personal goals weren't welcomed whilst you were growing up. Maybe you grew up, you grew up in an environment that didn't give you the permission to be yourself. And so perhaps you learned to enjoy your own company more than anything. And so you would escape into your room as a child or as a teenager and you would get lost in your imaginative desires and wants. Maybe you would actually become quite irritated and angry whenever you were disturbed. Or maybe you would engross yourself in movies and video games and films that involved action and violence and war. After all, within the day to day, you weren't allowed to bring out your fighting spirit. And so you find it behind the scenes or within the make believe. Then again, maybe some of you really took time to figure out an action plan behind the scenes. So you would train or you would exercise or you would bring out most of your energy. Maybe you are much more active when you're out of sight or when you're in your own world. And so in this way, you become a machine, but a silent machine. Heck, perhaps others have no clue as to the power of your energy and your drive and your self-assertion. However, the thing about this is that there are still some difficulties here when it comes to bringing these qualities out of you and into the world when dealing with others. In fact, maybe people may think you're a pushover and so you don't feel like you're taken seriously by others. Maybe you don't feel like you were given a fighting chance growing up and maybe that creates much grief and sadness within you. Perhaps you often wonder what it would have been like if you were given a better start or maybe you wish you could go back to the beginning again. And if we were to look at this through a really spiritual lens, maybe in this life you're coming to accept your position rather than dwelling within it. Then again, if we are to look at this in a much more serious way, perhaps you have an overwhelming amount of anger issues and 
It's such things that may stem from never coming first or again from feeling like you never had a fighting chance or perhaps they stem from always being the nice guy or gal with an inability to stand up for yourself and fight your corner. And so you have all of these dreams of winning, of accomplishing, of coming first, dreams of being a champion, a warrior, but whether or not these things materialize is debatable. Why? Well, because I think some of you may go through periods where you give up before you even start. Moments when it's easier to just drown yourself in substances that leave you stagnant. Times also when you engage in things like smoking or crime, getting up to no good, could even be a situation where you take aggression and anger out on yourself. Yeah, some of you can really struggle to see the point in pursuing anything Mars in the 12th house, Aries ruling the 12th house individuals. So let's address these anger problems some more because I think there is an important sub this is an important subject to touch on. So is it that you grew up being told no anytime you showed aggression of any kind or were your gut reactions to things shut down? Did it feel as if you weren't allowed to be a person within your own right? Or maybe others didn't believe you when you called others out on their BS you were called a liar, you were called a fibber, a storyteller, but deep down you knew you were not making things up. Or perhaps there was deception based around your actions, meaning you were accused of things that you didn't do as a child. Or maybe you were told, oh that thing you did, it's all in your head, it's all in your imagination. Or you can never do something like that, not you, no way. And so what starts to happen is you bury your independence and you bury your fighting spirit. Things, then these things, they are subconsciously tucked away as a means of survival and protection. And so this is why you're coming to learn how to integrate these qualities. Mars in the 12th house, Aries ruling the 12th house individuals. So for example, this could look like you going, you know what? actually I am going to achieve my goals. Or this could look like you standing up for yourself and not apologizing for doing so. It's like, mm, no, you pissed me off. So I'm gonna express this feeling to you whether you like it or not. See, you might actually view anger as a bad thing, as something that's wrong and devious Maybe you were told that you weren't allowed to be angry as a child. You would hear often, calm down, calm down, you're going to upset such and such, oh no, you don't want to upset them, do you? Maybe you weren't allowed to rock the boat or go against a parental figure's wishes and demands ever. Maybe one or both of your parents was an enabler or they would, they would stay silent, or maybe you experience people who called you selfish and loud. Anytime you acted in a way that didn't suit them. I mean, how selfish of you, right? Even though their actions were also selfish. Funny that. Still, however, maybe you grew up with these underlying fears of upsetting others because of your selfish desires and wants. And so this is why it's important to integrate anger in a healthy way because anger is not a bad emotion. All emotions are important because they signal things to us about how we are experiencing the world around us. So this integration could look like you saying, I feel really angry right now because X, Y, and Z, or this could be where you exercise or you move your body you know, you get the anger out in some way because that way you're allowing for the anger to move through the body. Or this could even be where you scream into a pillow or a cushion. And it's interesting because I remember listening to this relationship podcast, I can't remember the name of it, but they mentioned a technique that couples use as a way to get their anger out. So what they do is they push really, really hard on each other 
Now, of course, this is not with the intent of hurting each other. It's more of an exercise. It's a healthy exercise between two trusting and consensual adults. So there is that. Though another way is maybe by squeezing really tightly onto a stress ball. Basically, it's about allowing the anger to flow through the body. And it's about accepting that there's times you're gonna feel angry. <laughs> You're gonna get angry. Then again, then again, perhaps you're someone with these placements who finds it extremely difficult to control your anger at all. Maybe you actually have anger management issues and perhaps in this way it would be beneficial to speak to someone more professionally or to seek some type of guidance. However, I'm more under the impression here that anger is something that feels difficult to access, seeing as it is in the 12th house. And perhaps also the bottling up of your anger is linked to not getting what you want or not feeling like you can assert yourself. And so this is also why integrating your assertion and wants is important because maybe you won't become so annoyed then. And in the process, you will also get in touch with your inner champion, your inner warrior, your inner fighting spirit. This part of you that has what it takes, has what it takes to stand up with courage and bravery. And if we are going to go much deeper, perhaps such things are linked with past experiences as previously mentioned, or maybe even you were bullied at school, or by someone who was supposed to protect you. Then again, maybe you felt like you were in somebody else's shadow. They would take ownership for things that you did whilst, um, whilst you just acted like you were fine with it. Therefore, with the integration process, I think a part of it is about stepping in to say, mm, actually, I did that, or I'll go ahead of you. Or maybe there's something to be said about being straight and forward with others. So being able to lay out a plan or a situation clearly and directly. Or being able to say no, <laughs> no, without going back on your word or feeling bad about it. Or being able to follow things through without second guessing yourself. And perhaps also there's something so brave about addressing your subconscious. So this idea of unraveling the past, as you start to see where your repressions and your fears and insecurities, etc., where they stem from, but then also being able to make peace with such things as well, if it is that you desire to make peace with such things. Furthermore, I also think it's you, Mars in the 12th house, Aries in the 12th house individuals who have this way of aiding others in their own battles. We somehow manage to urge others to fight for themselves and you typically stand up for those who have been victimized in some way, shape or form. Indeed, you can act as a champion for those who need it as you stand up on the behalf of others. And to me, that is not selfish at all. In fact, I would say you're more selfless because you're the types of people who really go out of your way to help others. You're great at getting other people back on their feet after they've been hit, after they've been knocked down. But just be cautious, I suppose, of your tendency of attracting people who showcase violence towards you, people who pose a threat towards you. Now, don't get me wrong, your gut instinct is usually quite good at sensing such situations, but there may be times when you come up against people who project their anger and their rage onto you. They might even call you the bad guy because they're the ones who are in denial of their own shitty behavior, okay? Though just going along the lines of independence, guess what? It's also independence you're coming to integrate. See. You might have grown up in an environment where things were handed to you or maybe you were watched a lot by your parents. Basically, you might have been smothered, highly sheltered, but what your parents didn't realize is that they weren't actually keeping you as safe as they thought. 
because they didn't prepare you for the big bad world. So in this way, having some level of independence is important. So being able to make your own decisions or being able to follow your own path or being able to take accountability for your actions. These things are a part of the reason for why independence is necessary if we are to live fulfilling lives. Now, with all these things being said, well, there's also a transcendence process involved when it comes to the 12th house. So this idea of rising above and triumphing over the things that limit us in life. And so in the case of you Mars in the 12th house, Aries in the 12th house individuals, perhaps you're learning how to transcend your anger, for example. So looking at times when your anger hinders you and limits you, Maybe this could look like you choosing your battles more wisely, or this could be a situation where you take some time to reflect on things that make you angry and that trigger you. But remember, in order to arrive to such conclusions, one must, must also accept anger as a part of the self instead of denying and repressing it. Furthermore, perhaps you're also learning how to transcend times whenever you give up before even trying, or times whenever you have a want or a desire, but you don't pursue such things out of fear or because you don't want to be rejected. Perhaps by integrating and transcending, you won't feel so bitter or you won't harbor so much resentment towards the world. And you'll also assert yourself, you'll, you will drive yourself towards things much more effectively within the world. Then again, maybe there's times when you're called to sacrifice certain wants and desires for a higher purpose, which totally understandable. There's going to be situations in life that require this, but there's a difference between accepting sacrifice and denying the things that we want. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? The, the last thing here is that perhaps you're also learning how to transcend times when you let others do things for you without you lifting a finger, for example, <laughs> or when you let others make decisions for you because it's so much easier that way. Therefore, perhaps by integrating and transcending such things, you will feel much more independent, whereby which you also feel like a champion. This person who isn't afraid to go after your goals and your ambitions in life. This person with an inner fighting spirit that has been there all along. You've just find it challenging to access. Okay then Cosmic Warriors, so that concludes my video all about the independence and fighting spirit of those of you who have Mars in the 12th house within your natal birth chart, but also for those of you who have the sign of Aries ruling your 12th house within your natal birth chart as well. Now, for those of you who do have any of these placements, please let us know what you thought of the video in the comment section down below. It would be great to get your feedback and your opinions. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And of course, if you would like to see more videos from myself and you haven't yet subscribed, then make sure that you click that subscribe button and also make sure that you give this video a like, remember. And I will be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.